the end of trauma is coming and the end of trauma will be an eight week course on organic intelligence and the application of organic intelligence to one's own life. Uh, as you may find out in that course, there are uh, resources like uh, in, in this course, for instance, let me just give you a sneak preview, but there's go there are going to be uh, daily or, or at least cer certainly several weekly informational videos, short, concise ideas of, from organic intelligence that will help you consolidate and reinforce ideas that are, that are important from organic intelligence. Um, and these are ideas that really are founded in the way that our physiology operates. And we have to begin by understanding how our biology works, that we are first and foremost not a psychological being, but a physical being, a biological being. And my relationship with the way that my biology works is actually a key to happiness. So I'm going to share some of those with you uh, in, in our heart training and in this uh, end of trauma course. And I'd like to invite you to consider this uh, for your own benefit. There are going to be presented these ideas. The informational videos will come through. I will directly talk with you on weekly webinars and give you the orientation to the week's understandings and application of these tools into your personal life. So if you've got uh, some degree of anxiety or depression or, or even physical ailments is something we have really uh, good luck with, things like you know, decreasing the discomfort of fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue and so on. But people often find that they end up taking less medication for these things because it's really founded in the way that we can support the biology to work more efficiently. And that efficiency we define in a really specific way. You know, I have studied uh, therapy and I've, I've, you know, trained in clinical psychology and my meditation background really gives me perspective and grounding in a quality of presence and the use of attention. Uh, and then the study of the physiology and the clinical use and the, and the way that we, we speak to the language of the biology and listen to the language of biology and learn that language is a, is a key. So we'll look at uh, this acronym called ISOMA, which the acronym stands for image, sensation, orientation, meaning, and affect, which are all of the elements of one's experience. And we will look at each one of those and take each one of those in detail to give you better ideas on how to fully cooperate with the way that your system wants to improve itself, to grow itself, to heal itself. Not, and our goal isn't just then the end of trauma, but the end of trauma that means then the beginning of the stepping into the stream of your life's destiny. That is, why are you here on the planet? What is it you really feel like you might be here to achieve? If you've lost track of that, this organic intelligence end of trauma course may be something that you want to take a look at, and I, I would invite you to, to do that. So uh, you'll get the informational videos, the webinars, you'll, uh, you'll get daily meditations, and these these meditations, which you call the strategic use of perception, are really key. Um, and the daily use of that, you'll have a journal in which you'll do reflections, just very brief reflections on this process, and track your growth and development. Uh, there's going to be, there are a lot of bonus materials as well. There'll be a, a bonus coaching with me, there'll be bonus videos on, say, the way that the nervous system is structured so you can understand that better in order to work better with yourself. There will be all kinds of uh, additional like family rooms. You'll have a set of family rooms to be able to watch. These hour and a half informational videos are packed with information to help you understand organic intelligence and work better with your own system. So. I hope you'll consider to, to join us in organic intelligence. Our heart trainings are international. We're, we're working in Switzerland and Turkey and uh, in several locations in the United States. And, um, and in March, I'll be in Ireland uh, and I'll uh, then go to Switzerland. I'll be on the East Coast 
also in uh, Portland, Maine, and New York City, and then uh, from uh, from Switzerland, where our HART training is. HART stands for Human Empowerment and Resiliency Training. Uh, we go into then Istanbul and the Istanbul training, where we'll graduate our first cohort. So uh, take a look at uh, the end of trauma. Sign up on our, our website. Uh, be the first to be notified about, about that. And, uh, and then let's see if we can end some trauma and get people moving toward uh, a better way of living. Organic intelligence says that there is this impulse, this impulse of, uh, of support that arises spontaneously. And we are more and more going to let go and learn how to combat the addiction that is negativity, the addiction that is called the negativity bias or in organic intelligence, we call it the what's wrong attention, the way that we are primed to look for, seek for, be fascinated by, drawn to what's wrong. And we're going to try to break that habit and b the addiction and come over to a more conscious and enjoyable engagement, not with what's wrong, but what is, first of all, through orientation, connecting to the environment through the senses, and then cultivating a little bit at a time what is more pleasant in all of these channels, image, sensation, orientation, meaning, and affect. So in all of these channels, in the image channel, in this body sensation channel, in the way that I connect to the environment through the senses, in cognition, the meaning channel, in affect, in feeling, and emotion, we're going to cultivate supports in that, not because that's the cure, but because it's the balance to the what's wrong attention. Ultimately, the goal is to support people's return to efficient biological functioning, and that's synchrony. Uh, our, our motif here, and I'm sitting in front of this uh, banner that says the end of trauma has to do with resyncing your psychology, or resync your psychology, uh, because what suffering means is a biology that's out of sync. It's like a car that is out of um, out of harmony, that is, you know, that's, it's a tune, it needs a tune-up, basically. If you have a car that is really badly tuned, it just doesn't function. That's, that's chaos. If it is beginning to function better, and you're beginning to, you know, find the harmonic uh, relationship among, you know, those pistons, the spark plugs firing at the same time, and the work happening in sync, then you're beginning to move more toward Prosilience, a smooth and efficient movement. And so uh, that work is what I train people to see and to support the emergence, natural emergence of a system that can do that because our system not only wants to stay stable, it wants to grow. And if it can learn that it gets that stability and growth in efficiency and the growth in um, information processing, the growth in problem solving, right? the growth in clarity of mind, the growth in uh, clarity of spiritual insight, all of these aspects are prosilient and are the direction of organic intelligence. So from the standpoint of these isoma levels, we're going to explore each of those week by week, so that we can then find our way into this greater support. And you can take that support then into a session with an OI practitioner and really then uh, change your life. This has been a dream in a way because for those of us that are clinicians and working with people, they're coming in to work with us. People, clients come in and they may be used to a therapeutic milieu. They may be used to working with therapy, which specifically begins with the question, what's wrong? But from the standpoint of our perspective, what's wrong is the focus on what's wrong itself. We are instead extremely interested in listening adeptly to these isoma levels, image, sensation, orientation, meaning, and affect, and listening for the signal that is subtle, that is big or little, that is a signal of self-organizing information that is intended for your own system. So in our practice, we reflect back 
the signals that are meant to be from the client's biology self-organizing. And those signals are uniquely then positively reinforcing. And, uh, and we are training clinicians uh, and others really to work in our three-phase model because we have a unique perspective on attunement and how important it is to attune to the major phases of the, of the system. And in order to really attune to a system, we have to recognize whether it is primarily in a uh, disorganizational phase, uh, that is in a phase of, of chaos, or whether it is moving across into a more organizing phase. In phase one, in chaos, the system is disoriented and is really um, a, a subject to the basic biological principle of, of sameness or uh, stability uh, or uh, you know, just the way that systems are meant to stay really stable. Like, uh, for instance, the biology says, what's my first priority is actually stability or homeostasis, a balance, a fluid balance. But that balance has to be predicated on no major system changes. So on the one hand, uh, it says that my system needs to stay the same. And that means that it's not going to disintegrate. On the other hand, we're going to find that there is this equal impulse for growth, development, healing, and expansion of bandwidth, expansion of the capacity for information processing, expansion for the biology's ease of handling intensity of all kinds. So in phase one, the system is subject to this law of stability that says everywhere I go, I am self-reinforcing my level of functioning. That is, it's very hard and very difficult, very challenging, I was going to say nearly impossible, to, you know, uh, if you're falling in an elevator, jumping at the last minute does not save you. <laughs> you know, if the elevator is going down, it's just going down. Uh, and so uh, we have the similar sense from this stage of chaos, something else is needed. And it is really difficult because the person is like lost in a fog and it's, they will, people will reach out for help, but that help then often simply reinforces the state of their limited information processing. It, it reinforces sameness because that's an important value. In order to really grow a system, there has to be a very specific understanding of these phases and what is really helpful in each phase. And so in the human empowerment and resiliency training, we teach everybody who comes in. It's not just therapists. Uh, it is really for everyone who is wanting to be in support of themselves and life on the planet that we invite you to participate in this and, and learn these major phases. Because the shift then from phase one to phase two is where the person then begins to recognize what's actually going to be helpful and begin to limit their time in the activities and experiences and states that are that are simply keeping them stuck and then really moving toward states conditions activities habits and practices that are going to be truly helpful and these helpful tools are not going to be the ones that are normally talked about in therapy and I, and I know because I, I trained as a therapist so uh, this is something I want you to, to check out in the end of, of trauma uh, course. Uh, the, the next move, of course, is this movement from what one can be doing in self-support. That's phase two. And that's, that's all of the information and the theory and the practices that really build resilience. That is, that we are creating the conditions that truly support growth and stability, growth and capacity, ease, comfort, and movement toward happiness, and really providing this reason for hope. And uh, for those of you who are clinicians and already working in organic intelligence, your clients 
would benefit from this end of trauma course because when you start working with people, much of what you're doing is helping them move from phase one to phase two and helping them understand this new, un new model of how we work uh, and will help your clients begin to get some sense of what organic intelligence is and how they can best use their time in session. Uh, because we use a, instead of focus on the trauma or focus on what's wrong, focus on the problem, we focus on a free association conversation. And so for clients to begin to get or their orientation down, to get their, uh, the addiction to what's wrong, attention, calm down, to begin to focus on aspects of uh, orientation and the positive psycho psychology of pleasure and enjoyment and meaning, to really begin that practice means that your clinical work will be much more efficient and your client support will be much greater. So it's going to be a thorough and comprehensive course. I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, that you'll be able to you know, check it out, use it for yourself. If you're already working in organic intelligence, you know, to really uh, find this for your clients. Um, and, uh, and hopefully it'll be a gift to the resiliency field as well. So, um, and then once you get this phase two in line, then we're moving toward what I'm calling prosilience, uh, thanks to uh, our friends in the Basel heart training. Um, this prosilience, resilience means sort of bouncing back, but organic intelligence says resilience is simply the platform for the launch into the way that your biology and mind wants to grow and develop. And in that growth and development, express its true human nature in our, in our social engagement system, which is, of course, the pleasure of connection, of love and contact. Uh, so uh, I hope you'll, uh, you'll hang in there and, uh, and be able to join us for the movement from chaos to resilience uh, and then on to prosilience, where uh, hopefully our nature can shine through. And, and our agenda, just to, to be really clear, is our, our agenda is to support people of goodwill to grow their natural ability of compassion so that that compassion spills over into benefit for life on the planet. So I hope that begins to give you a little flavor of where we're going. Um, the, the, the caveat in all of this is that the what's wrong attention is so pervasive that, that, um, that we have to be really strategic about which of the isoma channels we reinforce. You know, uh, when, I, when I left, uh, I, I studied clinical psychology and I, did, uh, I, I studied in an APA approved program and did all of the coursework all of the internships, all of the clerkships, all of the psych testing, and got a successful uh, first draft of, uh, of my dissertation and walked away because I saw a sign that said healing trauma through the body. And I said, yes, something is there. And I really studied then for uh, quite some time to figure out what is this language of the biology that we need to speak. And it has so much to do with the language of sensation. But sensation, uh, you know, if, you, if you're studying the language of the physiology, and then many schools of thought say, ah, it's sensation. So uh, in, uh, in Dick Olney's uh, school, which, uh, which then was a source for somatic experiencing, sensory motor psychotherapy, Hakomi, and others, they really uh, relied on the use of sensation and sensation awareness, it's called, in science, it's called interoception, uh, as does meditation. And uh, in that only school, they learned the use of sensation awareness through the work, uh, certainly of the Gurdjieff uh, tradition, which works a lot in sensation, but also through a woman who is a p pioneer in this area named Charlotte Selber. And so, uh, the, the work of sensation is an important work, but as with all the channels, it's not necessarily the answer. If you're a cognitive behavioral therapist, you say, okay, let's focus on cognition. If you're, you know, um, 
you know, a insight-oriented therapist. You may also look at insight, but you may be looking also at emotion. Therapy often really focuses on emotion, examination of emotion. So you say, oh, it's the A of isoma that's important. Or the, the cognitive work, oh, it's the M that's important. Or if you're working in uh, eidetic imagery uh, or maybe hypnosis, you're saying, oh, it's the image channel that's important. If you're working in the somatic approaches, you say, oh, it's the somatic approach that's important. Well, each of those is true. All of those are important. But what's even more important is that we recognize there's a larger function of the biology that is self-organizing and, and really that the biology is is in intending to bring stability will mostly be subject to that what's wrong attention to the negativity bias and all of those channels if left alone will most often simply reinforce the current level of functioning or stuckness so uh so at the same time that we say yes it's all of those channels most of the time it's not uh, any particular channel like it's not uh, it's not image, it's not sensation, it's not orientation, meaning or affect that is most key. What's key is that we learn to hear and feel and sense more and more subtly the channel through which the self-organizing information is brought and then in OI we reflect that back either subconsciously or consciously to the client system so that the signal of that self-organizing impulse will be obtained and integrated into that client system. And so that's, that's what I've been doing for the past 20 years, is really training clinicians mostly for work in this way. Now we're opening it up. The heart training is open for uh, anyone of goodwill who wants to train in this way, because we're not, we're not doing therapy. We're doing this interpersonal biofeedback process, and, uh, and we are opening then this uh, end of trauma course for anyone who wants to integrate these skills for their own life first. One of the one of the things that I that I hope you really uh, believe is is a cornerstone of us uh, of our work here in organic intelligence, uh, which is that the work of personal integration has to go right alongside the per, the work of like professional integration. That is, we're really interested in the growth of our own system and my growth personally is enhanced by my growth professionally. Like learning how to do organic intelligence for uh, others is helpful for myself. It's that win-win situation that, that we get. Uh, a little bit later today... Uh, I'll uh, I'll do a part of an interview for uh, um, a documentary in the Broken Brain series of uh, Dr. Mark Hyman, and we'll be talking about this notion that this self-organizing capacity, our organic intelligence approach uh, advocates, is really this natural approach that leans heavily on something that uh, that I that I want to repeat, which is you are more amazing than you know. You are more amazing than you know. And so uh, in uh, this time, I'm looking forward to the dialogue with a biology, with a physiology, with images and sensations and cognitions and feelings that specifically are coming from you to you. But we need one another. We need the reflection from, from one another to really make that happen. And that's uh, for those of us in the DIY world, you know, that's not our most favorite thing to hear. Like, I can't do it all myself, but uh, that's the reality. There is stuff we need to do, and we need our due diligence, and that's going to be lined out in the end of trauma course, and then we need some help. And we have trained, and I have trained over the years, really thousands of therapists, and the organic intelligence uh, community is ready and standing by to support you in your growth and development. Uh, and uh, you, you, can, you can leverage then the growth that you do and the work that you do for yourself in the end of trauma course, then by going into and working and bringing that better stabilization and that positive psychological framework into your session work uh, so that you can really then grow your your biology and, and get back on track okay
So uh, that's the direction we're beginning to think of. Uh, the main things that I wanted to name here were, uh, were these ideas. Priming is key. Work with image is really key. Um, and uh, the, the way that we are giving benign neglect to the information that is disorganizing our, our compass is really around what feels well, what feels good. And we give a certain amount of what I call benign neglect to that which doesn't feel well uh, unless there's a good reason for it. Like I'm being chased by a bear. I'm going to feel jacked up if I'm, if I'm being chased by a bear. Uh, or, you know, there are a whole host of other environmental traumas that could threaten me. But in the absence of life threat, my biology should be fairly relaxed, comfortable, and providing impulse toward connection, engagement, joy, and pleasure, exploration, and play. All of this is our bailiwick, right? All of that is our bailiwick. That's our human nature, um, and uh, probably along with a bit of gossiping, which, which is, uh, of course, problematic, but so enjoyable. So uh, we, have to, uh, we have to choose where we're going to send our attention. We're going to practice that uh, and get you a bit more control over your situation so you begin to feel better and are able to then leverage your feeling better into real growth of uh, being at the level of the physiology. That's where the rubber hits the road for us. So uh, these are some tools uh, that I wanted to, to have you uh, come into mind about. Uh, and it's really no more than the gift of coming into our nature, right? There is support coming your way, and it is from yourself. And uh, I'm looking forward to your participation with that. Uh, I hope you'll uh, consider this end of trauma course as a way of, um, of really supporting yourself so that you then uh, will be in support of life on the planet. And the fuel for that, from the standpoint of organic intelligence, is our birthright in uh, in joy and meaningful engagement. Joy and meaningful engagement. So uh, there is lots to look forward to.